Here are 25 basic Linux commands that every Linux user as a beginner should know. But these are not all that you should know, but these are the basic and most commonly used commands. Let's begin. The ls command in Linux is used to list the files and directories in a specified location, typically the current working directory if no path is provided. It provides a convenient way to view the contents of a directory without needing a graphical file manager. Use this command to list files and directories in the current directory. To list files in long format with detailed information use the argument dash L. To list all files including hidden files in a specific directory use the argument dash A. To recursively list all files and subdirectories within a directory use dash capital R. To list files with human readable file sizes use dash LH. If you use dash T, files will be listed and sorted by date time, newest first. We can combine arguments like this to get customized result. You do not need to remember every argument. Use the man ls command to see what each argument means. Man stands for manual. The pwd command in Linux stands for print working directory. It is used to display the full path of the current working directory, which is the directory you are currently located in within the file system. When you execute this command, it will output the absolute path of the directory you are currently in. This can be helpful for understanding your current location in the file system hierarchy. The mkdir command in Linux is used to create new directories also known as folders. You can use this command to make a new directory within the current working directory or at a specified location. mkdir-p will create a new directory along with its parent directories if they don't exist. Use this command to create a directory with specific permissions like read, write, execute for owner, read and execute for group and others. M is for mode. The number 755 will change as per the permissions you want to give. You can also create multiple directories in one command like this by separating the folder names by a space. You can also create nested directories like this. Use the man command to know more arguments you can use with mkdir. The cd command in Linux is used to change the current working directory. It allows you to navigate the file system and move from one directory to another. Use cd space path to the directory to directly go to the particular location. Use cd double to move up one level in the directory hierarchy. Use cd space tilde to directly move to your home directory. Use cd space dash to move to the previous directory if you've just changed directories. The rmdir command in Linux is used to remove empty directories. It's used when you want to delete a directory that doesn't contain any files or subdirectories. Use dash p to remove a directory and its parent directories if they become empty. Dash v will show the removal process in detail. Use the man command for more details on this command. The cp command in Linux is used to copy files and directories from one location to another. You can copy a file and rename it. Copy a directory and its contents to another location. Our means recursive. Copy with confirmation before overriding existing files. Our means interactive. Use the man command for more details on this command. The mv command in Linux is used to move files and directories from one location to another. It's also used to rename files and directories. Use the man command for more details on this command. The rm command in Linux is used to remove files and directories. It's a powerful command, so use it with caution, as deleted files and directories are usually not recoverable unless you have a backup. The uname command in Linux is used to display system information about the current operating system. It can provide various details about the system, including the kernel version, machine hardware name, operating system name, and more. The uname command is often used to retrieve specific information for scripting and system administration tasks. The locate command in Linux is used to quickly search for files and directories on the system using a pre-built index. 
It's particularly useful for locating files based on their names. The locate command relies on a database which is usually updated regularly using the update db command that contains a list of all files and directories on the system. The touch command in Linux is used to create empty files or update the access and modification times of existing files. It's a versatile command that can be used for various purposes such as creating new files, updating timestamps, and more. The ln command in Linux is used to create links between files or directories. These links can be either hard links or symbolic or soft links. Links provide a way to reference a file by a different name or location without actually duplicating the data on disk. Understanding the difference between hard and symbolic links is important when using the ln command. Hard links are references to the same inode as the source file. Inode is the data structure that holds the actual file data. Changes made to one hard link are reflected in all other hard links to the same inode. Symbolic links or soft links are references to the path of the source file or directory. They are more flexible than hard links and can link to directories on different file systems. The cat command in Linux is used to display the contents of one or more files in the terminal. The name cat stands for concatenate, as one of its primary functions is to concatenate and display the contents of files. It's often used to quickly view the contents of text files. In Linux, the clear command is used to clear the contents of the terminal screen, providing you with a clean and empty terminal window. This can be useful when the terminal becomes cluttered with previous commands and outputs, making it difficult to read new information. The PS command in Linux is used to display information about the currently running processes on your system. It provides a snapshot of the processes that are active at the moment you run the command. The PS command can be used with various options to customize the output according to your needs. Use the man command to see all the arguments you can use with PS. The grip command in Linux is used to search for specific patterns of text within files or the output of other commands. It stands for Global Regular Expression Print. It's a powerful tool for text pattern matching and manipulation. Use the man command for more details on this command. In Linux, the echo command is used to display messages or print text to the terminal. It's a simple way to output text or variable values. The history command is used to display a list of previously executed commands in the terminal session. It provides a chronological record of commands you've entered, making it easy to review your command history and rerun previous commands without retyping them. The who am I command in Linux is used to display the username of the currently logged in user. It provides a quick way to find out your own username without the need to navigate through system settings. When you run the who am I command, it will output your username to the terminal. The sudo command in Linux is used to execute commands with superuser or elevated privileges. It allows authorized users to perform administrative tasks without logging in as the root user. The term sudo stands for superuser do. Using sudo allows you to temporarily elevate your privileges to perform tasks that require administrative access, such as installing software, configuring system settings, and modifying system files. This helps enhance security by providing finer control over who can perform privileged actions on the system. You need to know the command for package installation for your distro if you want to install any software via the terminal. If you're on Debian-based distro like Ubuntu or Linux Mint, You'll need to know app command. If you use Fedora, you need DNF and yum commands. And if you use Arch, you'll need to know Pacman and Ye commands. Use the man command to see how you can use these commands. The whereas command in Linux is used to locate the binary, source code, and manual page files for a specified command. It helps you find the various files associated with a given command. The command searches through predefined directories where executable files, source code, and manual pages are typically stored. The df or disk-free command in Linux is used to display information about the disk space usage on the file systems. It provides a summary of the available, used, and total disk space, as well as the space usage percentage for the specified file systems.
The DF command is useful for monitoring disk space usage and identifying if a file system is getting close to its capacity. The IP space ADD or command in Linux is used to display and manage network interfaces and their associated IP addresses. It provides detailed information about the network interfaces on your system, including their current status, IP addresses, subnet masks, and more. This command is a part of the IP root 2 package, which is a modern replacement for the older ifconfig command. We've covered only 25 commands here, but there are some more useful commands like chmod for changing file permissions, wget to download files from internet, curl to open web pages, kill command to kill processes, ping command to check if a website or IP address is reachable or not, system ctl command to start or stop a service. You can see the man page of these commands to see how to use those commands. Let me know in the comments if you know some more useful commands which we all should know as a beginner. That's it for today. Please give a thumbs up if you like this video and subscribe to the channel if you like to see more contents like this. If you have any suggestions, let me know in the comments as well. And as always, never forget how awesome you are, even on tough days. It's Q, signing off.